food. And, you know, through good old-fashioned all-American consumerism, we can not only make a difference for ourselves, we can give a loud message to manufacturers that the 21st century must be a time for more conscientious manufacturing and purchasing power. And also, you know, to our legislators, our elected officials, have to make this a first and foremost concern because we're on a slippery slope down this rabbit hole. And, you know, we're at a tipping point when two, one out of two men are getting cancer and one out of three women. It's like uh, something's got to give to change right. up people. And, right. you know, once, once you wake up and smell the coffee, it's hard to go back to sleep. So we're down in the lawn. And you don't have to throw everything away. It's a, it's something that you gradually do over time as you learn more about it. And we have a good guy on our Trash Cancer program. Uh, you go into the website for org or trashcancer.org. You get to the same place. Mm-hmm. through either place, and, uh, you know, you can put in a brand, a product that you've been using, maybe something that gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling because your mom and your grandmother bought it too. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it may not wait so well, and, you know, you may have to start reconsidering. It may actually be very unhealthy, and th- this is what we have to start educating ourselves on. No one's going to do it for you. So you have to just start thinking about this and making healthier choices for you and your family. This is true. Well, Fran, I I want to applaud you for, you know, having this vision for the cancer cancer movement born out of your own experience and and also taking it to the next level by going to, you know, getting the United States uh, the first Gynecological Cancer Education Awareness Act passed into law. I mean, that was no small feat, I'm sure. And um, and now you're working with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention um, to to use the appropriate funds to, so that all women can uh, be reached. And um, and how is that how is that going? So you know, so far since that has been started. Well, that uh, that was a very positive bill that. Uh, we uh, were very instrumental in getting passed by unanimous consent, which means all 100 senators said yes. And it's totally an education bill uh, to, that, you know, um, ends up costing about a nickel a woman. And it's targeting them to learn the early warning whispers of gynecologic cancers and the tests that are available. Now we have a new uh, initiative that we're working another bipartisan bill uh, that's being spearheaded by Congressman Deutsch, a Democrat, and Congresswoman Merrick, who's also a cancer survivor and a Republican uh, from North Carolina. And uh, together they, with the full support and inspiration of our Trash Cancer Program and full support of Cancer Schmancer, uh, we're going to really get this next initiative going, which is going to be a fantastic aid for uh, the consumer by inviting um, manufacturers to prove at their own expense through an approved third-party um, lab that they have a product that by today's standards are considered carcinogen-free. And if they can prove that, then they can pay the government a fee to have the privilege of putting on their labeling that they are a carcinogen-free product by this government fee-free label. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually a – it encourages and invites manufacturers to present a product that the consumer can see very easily – on the shelf is safe for them and their family to use, and they don't have to go to MIT to understand what the ingredient set is. <laughs> Isn't and that the at truth? the same token, we as Americans can actually, just by purchasing power, start to inform manufacturers that this is the direction that they have to go because this is actually what we're buying. 
So it encourages uh, the purchasing and it encourages the manufacturing. And it just, you know, raises the flag that uh, this has to be the vision for this century because um, the, what we're practicing right now is completely unsustainable. And, you know, it, it's, it's in the 20th century that uh, Americans became inundated with levels of uh, chemicals that the human had never experienced before. And the amount of disease that we are experiencing now has also increased its exponential amount. So, you know, we have to look at the large picture here and see what it is that, uh, you know, we're doing to ourselves and stop it already. Right. Yeah, right. and, and I'm, I'm just so, you know, it really um, makes me feel good to know that, you know, the original uh, legislation was unanimously passed because I think yeah, there's not that nice. That is nice. And, um, and and the other aspect of that is I don't think there's a person alive whose life has not been touched in some form or fashion by cancer, you know, well, whether it be their own exactly. experience you're, or, you're, you're you know, our family right. member. It, you know, yep. everyone, cancer, you know, um, is not prejudiced. And so I think every family has been affected in some form, you know, in some way. And uh, and so just the fact that you have raised the awareness and are doing what you're doing for cancer research and just to educate people, to make you them know realize what? that. That's why mm, I always tell elected officials, listen to me. Poor health is the great equalizer. It knows no religious, political uh, boundaries. This That's is true. a unilateral concern. It's a human concern. Right. And they hear me. They hear me. Yes, and I'm so glad they did. I really am. Um, <laughs> you know, you've made some tremendous strides, and I, I'm just so thankful to you for being able to do that. I mean, I've had lost in my own family, um, cancer is on my mom's side, pretty pretty rampant, and it's taken several of my family members, and um, and several have been, you know, treated or in, in remission, so just to have this so that it's accessible and people, you know, and it really is just about preventative measures. I think a lot of times that people are just consciously aware of what they can do to kind of ward off some of, you know, cancer in some forms, um, it, it makes all the difference. But sometimes they don't know, and that's why it's, the education piece is so critical. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, making Americans realize that this is totally up to them. And the way they respond to this most critical issue Everything else is going to fall into place. They are the ones in control. And, you know, the World Health Organization uh, determined the United States to be number 37 in terms of global health. That stinks, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. For a country as wealthy and technologically advanced as we are, that really is an embarrassment of riches. And, uh, you know, we've really got to take the bull by the horns because there's been a very um, out-of-balance shift and the um, capitalism has run amok and Mm -hmm. the profit margin has superseded what is the the concern for the greater good and the um, and shareholders profits are of greater interest than the customer that's and true. all of that has got to shift. And I have to say on behalf of um on behalf of um Obamacare, which I have always been a supporter of, I think that uh, the oh there's the uh, the silver lining that people um don't um really realize is that right now we have plunked trillions of dollars into trying to find a cure for cancer. And where's the cure? The President's Cancer Panel of 2010 put out a 200-page report that said there's not going to be a cure until we start living 
a, a cleaner lifestyle because it's just going to mutate. It's going to become stronger. It, you know, it's going to change. There's no magic pill that's going to take this away short of really switching up our acts. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, with o Obamacare, every country that has any form of nationalized health care, they are a much more prevention-oriented nation because, and by the way, they're ahead of us in the World Health Organization list. Why? Right. Because living a preventative, healthy lifestyle is cheaper. Don't get mm -hmm. sick in the first place. And That's right. And companies like Humana, that's a health insurance company that's a big supporter of Cancer Schmanza, is already getting savvy to this because health insurance has never really pushed Americans and encouraged them to live healthier. All they were concerned with was, you know, reducing people's benefits, dropping them if they get too sick, putting a, a, a you know a cap on how sick they can get. I mean, it's just it, it, it was an out of control situation. And not only has Obamacare helped to prevent that from happening right off the bat, you know, you can no longer be um, canceled because you're too sick. What is that about? I bet horrific. You can no longer be told you can't get insurance because you have been sick in the past. It's like, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. horrible and unconscionable, mm -hmm. really. No business should function like that. But people like Humana are now beginning to invite and encourage their subscribers to um, have uh, to join their vitality program. And the more they live a preventative lifestyle, the more they're going to gain benefits from being a subscriber through the company, and they're supporting Cancer Schmanzer and the Trash Cancer Program for all of their elders, uh, their, their senior subscribers and stuff. So it's very exciting seeing this shift because this is the direction that we all have to go. Right. Now, I went to have my mammogram the other day, and I wore my Trash Cancer T-shirt that I bought. Oh. Uh -huh. And you had, I had so many people asking me about it, so I'm spreading the word as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, my mother passed away when she was 52 um, from breast cancer. She got it when she was 49, and she never went for her mammogram. So I've oh, been going. Yeah. I've been going since I was 30 years old every single year to have my mammogram done. Does anybody mm -hmm. enjoy it? No, of course not. But it's something that you have to do, and I 1,000% I believe in preventative measures. So I go every year to go and do what I have to do, whether it be for a pap smear or for, you know, the mammogram or even have my teeth checked, you know, whatever it is, I go and I do it. Yeah, you're so, absolutely right. There's so many that's women out there good. that that don't do it. You know, that's being a good medical consumer. We transform patients into medical consumers because, you know, you can keep your head in the sand for so long and be in denial, but eventually you're not going to be able to deny it, and that will be the day that it will be too late. So, you know, when you feel something strange, and you all know when you do, that's the time when you're in the whisper stage and you can go into denial and say it's nothing, I'm too busy, I got a lot to take care of with the family or whatever mm -hmm. you come up with to procrastinate doing what you should do. But you can also start reprogramming yourself into saying, you know, this may be nothing, but God forbid it's something, I want to uh, find out now while it's still in the whisper stage because I have to be alive and well for my family. Let me tell you something. When you put your family first, you're really putting them last because you are useless to them if you're six feet under. Exactly. Yep, that's right. And, Even you know, there are now uh, more and more innovations in, uh, you know, our early uh, uh, breast uh, detection um, uh, you know, um, kinds of uh, diagnostic and uh, screening tools. 
uh, I'm really going to start 